Welcome to the final video series of Easy Injection Java Programming Academic Profession Computer Science 101 class here on YouTube channel, security in mind. Today we're going to talk about interfaces and a few more object oriented principles. And that should end this video series about introduction Java programming. Let's go ahead and briefly just talk about a few more object orientational principles and say this is a class instantiation that is also called a composition which is basically um, it, it, it implies that this class here have ownership of this instantiated second class blueprint which is the same as saying as when this class is terminated everything inside of it is also terminated all right so sometimes you have other programs and this is going to be too much and large for me to showcase easily you have something called an aggregation which is differently that is when you have a method that takes a variable as an instantiated class then the instantiated class will come outside the class being set as an argument or a param parameter, you can call that as well, but argument is probably the more right way, to a method. And so when that class is, is, is terminated, the aggregated class is not because it is not a part of the, well, it's not instantiated inside of the class. So that does not imply ownership. Anyways, it is also getting really advanced pretty fast. Let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and create our first interface. And I guess we should just do this interface. Let's call it a textbook example animal. And let's go ahead and close the second class and I'm going to delete the second class because we don't need that anymore. Delete. And the first class is all right. We can, we can keep that. That is fine. So now it's really important you just stick to the idea of type name equal assignment really, really much because this is going to get a little wild. Let's create another class. We'll just call it tiger. Let's create another class. Let's call it um, uh, bird, I guess. No, it's uh, it's it's a bad name. Let's let's uh, let's just quickly delete it and create a new class instead of bird. Let's call it lion because that is a more direct name. So we have tiger, we have lion, we have the animal class. You probably guessed it that animal is some sort of it's like the category for lion and tiger the category is not the correct object orientational way to describe this it would be the super interface or the super type what i need to do is introduce to this class that the interface is the super type or its category and that will enable us to instantiate any animal that have this super um, type in the same variable so what we could pro what, what we would end up doing is animal and then any animal a equals to new lion and we would also be able to do new tiger and pay attention to this, it's the same type, but it's different classes. That would not be possible in the prior example before we had the interface. This is what we're gonna end up with, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with the interface. So all, all animals do have a public void method called sound, because they all, all make a sound. All, all animals should be able to do something like walk, 
so on and so on. So you might think, what is this weird notation I'm doing? This is this is the notation of of what you're gonna do in interfaces if you're gonna do it the original old school way. I know the new, newer versions of Java contain more stuff you can do in interfaces, but it will only confuse the principal, so I'm not gonna do it. What we're gonna do now is, is say this line is going to implement animal. And when we do that, you basically tell the code that you are implementing this. And you think implement super type. What is all this? So the type was described by the methods as we talked about, not the name. So if I do click this small here, light bulb to implement methods and take both of them from the interface, we have we are overriding the existing method that is empty, which is why we're writing it. And now we can create our own sound for the tiger. So, sorry, the lion. The lion says raw. And walking could be like the lion. Okay. The lion hawks. All right. And then we can go to tiger and say more or less the same. Implements animal implement the methods as before and now we can go ahead and say the tiger says meow <laughs> and we can do the the tiger walks and now we can go back to the original class see that our error message dis disappeared and now I can say I want to print out a sound and I also want to print out the. Oh, sorry, I cannot print it out because it's already printed out. So it's just A sound and B sound. I'm going to run that. And basically, you can see the line says raw and the tiger says meow. We use the same type. That is called loose coupling because the coupling part is the type of the variable we created. And since that type. Is the same type as the um, as the uh, super type our interface. The classes basically will obey and put inside of it. If I, in the line class, decided to do something like public uh, void test and introduce this new method, we can still fit the classes inside its container. But since lion is saying my super type is animal, so I can only have the methods that animal have. So if you go to lion, which is the class of A, you cannot see test, which is why you will have the initial new problem of how can I call this then? Well, if you want to call this, you need to obey to the rule of lion and not animal. So you need to change the type. Uh, one way of doing that is is basically saying you can typecast something uh, in in the front. Uh, it wouldn't work this this particular way, but what you would probably need to do is to to create a new variable called lion c and then you could probably typecast the existing variable a and c you can then call test but then and uh, please pay attention to that you can still call the other methods called test walk and stuff like that but now you are back to the original strict coupling because it's not loose anymore so you can only use this variable to new types of the same so let's go ahead and create one last example and we're going to call it an animal factory i'm going to create a new class called it animal factory and inside of this class here we're going to create a method called public and we say animal because we're returning an animal and we call it create animal just like that and inside of this we're going to create an int type so we're going to say if 
the type equals one. Then we're going to return a new lion. Else if type equal two, then you're returning a new tiger. And if none of these were obeyed, we have an else we're returning by default, which is just a tiger for now. All right, so what is wrong? I method call expecting, need new, sorry. Yeah, so we're basically saying here that we create a class only for one purpose, is to create animals of the type of animal, the super type. And we can we can uh, make the method return a different uh, different animal depending on a t uh, value of the type int, well, the variable type. So if we go to our first class, we can create our animal a variable, and then we can instantiate animal factory in af equal to new animal factory, just like that. And now we can say a is equal to af create animal one. And then I say a sound, and I can say a is now all written by a new one. I'm gonna create the type two and gonna call sound again. This is possible because we have the loose coupling. Lion says raw, the tiger says meow. So now we've proven that the same variable of animal, which is the super type of animal, and that is the super type of both of the classes called tiger and lion. And when you implement an interface to a class, it is basically called you're implementing that interface. And the implementation of it is the code here. Now we have this class here that we can test that is going to, to be deleted because it's nothing to do with the actual super type. So now we, that we implemented sound and walk in both tiger and lion, we can now use that and we can call this through a factory. We call it the animal factory. And then we can use the same variable A to contain different types, which is another way of preserving memory on your machine. All right, so I already took it a bit further than I expected that I would. These type of videos are created for you that is going on a school, computer science, academic professional stuff. So you're already doing programming, you're already reading in a book, you're already doing exercises. These videos are made for you then. Take care.